Alama, the way that I prefer to run large language models on my Apple Silicon Mac, has just announced just yesterday that it's now got a release that runs on Linux. Now that is great because what that means is that we're now able to run Alama with all the models that it supports on any cloud service provider that we'd like to use. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to set it up on my preferred uh, cloud service provider, which is DigitalOcean not sponsored um, and show you how to get to grips with it and get started using it uh, so with all that said let's get on with things so yeah llama has announced yesterday that it now runs on linux it has wsl support and will support nvidia gpu acceleration in this demo i'm not going to be using gpu acceleration because the servers that i'm going to be using do not have any options for that but you can go and use it on whichever service provider that you prefer and get the added benefit of the boost that you get from GPU. So here I am, this is DigitalOcean. I'm gonna create a new droplet here. I'm gonna select London as my region because that's the place that's closest to me. And I'm gonna opt for a machine that, I'm gonna use a regular machine, but I'm gonna opt for one that has eight gig of RAM because actually, Doing it on some of these smaller machines that I found, it's just not going to work at all. And I think it's eight gig is probably the minimum that's supported anyway. I'm going to add my SSH key and then I'm just going to rename this to Alama. And I'm going to create my droplet. Okay, great. So that's been created. Let's see if we can actually SSH into it. And I've been needing to say that I am root. Okay, Okay. cool, we are in. So we have this command, we literally install it with one command, just this curl one. You should always inspect the scripts uh, that you are going to run. I trust the Alarma guys. You got a nice link there to be able to inspect it anyway. So let's just run that command there. Okay, so we can see there that it's saying that we don't have an NVIDIA GPU detected, so it's gonna run in CPU only mode. So yeah, definitely if you wanna um, do something more that is not just a test and do something more production worthy, then you probably want to get a machine with GPU. But for now, let's just try and run something in Llama. So I'm going to try Llama to uncensored and just see if I can get a model installed and running. So saying there that Llama is not running, we need to do Llama serve to start. Okay, so if do that is it now running okay so will that run now yeah okay so if we do service alarm start it runs and then we can pull so I'm pulling down the Llama 2 uncensored model and we've got all these models that are available to us. So a lot of different models that we can run on any cloud service provider that we are running Linux on, which is great. So we're using Ubuntu in this case. Um, and as we can see, it seems to be installing correctly. So let's wait for this to download. Okay, cool. So that model's come down. Let's try and run it. Okay, great. And we're gonna ask it a question, why is the sky blue? And you see it's taking a little bit of time for a response there. It's obviously only an eight gig machine and it's all running on the CPU, it's not running on GPU, but we are getting a response. So the sky appears blue because of a combination of factors, yada, yada, yada. But that's really impressive. We've been able to install this and get it working in no time at all. Very quick installation procedure. And we've pulled down the Llama 2 uncensored model. So we have everything that that provides as well. And we can do this on, like I said, on any cloud provider we like. So let's come out of this. Um, the next thing about this is that we can actually run it as an API. So currently, if we scroll back through this blurb that we have here, this is running an API on the local host on 11434. So we do have an example of using that API, I think, in their GitHub. Let's have a look at that. Okay, 
Okay, so if we now use this post command, so we can do this isn't going to work because actually that is the Llama 2 model. So let's jump back and change it to Llama 2 Uncensored because I don't want to pull down another model and be able to see what the output from the API is. So this is the way that a Llama sees things behind the scenes. So we can see that every you got each token being spat back as like a real time API. So at the moment, if we were to try and do that locally uh, from my machine, so if we open another terminal here, okay, so if we're trying to run that same command here and we use the IP address that we've been given by DigitalOcean for our droplet, this isn't going to work. And that's because, so we can see we got failed to connect to server. That's because this is only accepting connections from local host. Now, there's a whole bunch of things that you'd need to consider around firewall rules and et cetera, et cetera. But I'm going to open this up and just prove that we can access this locally um, from my Mac here. So to do that, we need to set an environment variable. So I'm going to set, I'm going to service, Llama stop, stop. Um, there is an environment variable, which I believe is a llama host. Yes, a llama host. Okay, so so if we set this here and do llama host equals zero zero zero, as in or from any IP address rather than just local host, and we set it to the Ormon 434, which is the default port that Alama is using, then I hope when we start this, it will accept connections. So let's see. Um, fail to connect to server. Okay. I'm going to do it like that. So what I'm going to do is explicitly set the Alama host and then do alarm server after. Okay, cool. Now we can see it's listening on this port and we've got a whole bunch of output and also the warning about the GPU support. So let's see if that now runs. Ah, in fact, actually that's not gonna work because we haven't got the uncensored. Let's do uncensored model. Ah. Okay, so it's claiming that that model is not already downloaded. Let's open up a separate connection to it. So if you have a look, we haven't actually stored that model, which is interesting. Let's pull it again. So I'm wondering if the reason we had to pull it again is because the, the host has been changed and so that affects things in some way in the way that it's been stored. And so maybe the models do no longer exist. So you can see that we didn't have any models listed there at all. Anyway, let's wait for this to come down and see if we can actually run it client side. Okay, cool. So that's come down. We're still serving here. Let's see if that now is going to run. Just putting out a load of outputs. Still not got a response. OK, got a response. There we go. <laughs> so we can see again these tokens are coming down and now we're running this client side making a call to our server from the same interface in same Alama interface. We have this standardized kind of interface to server based model. And I think this is great because this means that we can just use anything we want. We can install any model that we want really simply the same kind of process for using it. The other thing that we can do is in fact, actually, if we um, use um, Alarma host locally um, and so if I 
So I have a Llama installed on my client machine. So this being our client machine again, if I list what I've got installed, I do not have Llama 2 and sensors. If I set the Llama host, so the IP address of this machine, if I can remember what it was, this one. And just say Llama run Llama to uncensored. Then we can see that we've got that API happening there. Um, so let's ask it a question it wouldn't answer if I was using a normal model. So I'm going to use the killers question that I had before. So two killers are in a room. One killer, hang on, another killer enters the room and kills one of them. How many killers are now in the room? So this shouldn't answer in with a default kind of Llama 2 model or it doesn't tend to because it treats it as a, a question that is deemed too too risky for it to answer it doesn't fit within its boundaries so it's likely it's going to get the answer wrong but the fact that it answers it is good is what we want So it's saying there's no information given about how the second killer entered the room, so it's impossible to determine whether the new killer killed the first or the second person in the room. Therefore, there could be one, two, or three killers in the room, depending on which scenario occurred. I don't think there could ever be three killers if one had entered the room and killed one of the others. There's one or two. Anyway, uh, there's two, in fact, not one or two. But it's the fact that we can call what we've just installed on our own server under using our model that we selected, the open source one. This is great. I think this is great. You should go off and try and use it. Um, let me know how you get on. Let me know if you get around this weird situation that I had with the models there having to be downloaded twice. Um, yeah, and I'll speak to you soon, new video. All right, bye for now. Bye.